Married or single, father or fatherless, doesn't matter. We're calling you to the man cave right right now. now. Conversations from the Cave is a raw self-help podcast dedicated to discussing men's issues from pornography to parenting, from religion to real life, from learning to loving. We discuss the real issues that affect real men every day. Join us each week for powerful, revealing conversations from the Cave. Now, your host, Kirk Kennedy. Welcome to another episode of Conversations from the Cave. I am your host, Kirk Kennedy. It is a pleasure to have you here with us for yet another installment of Conversations from the Cave. This week we're going to be dealing with addiction, and for the next two weeks, actually, we will be dealing with the difficult discussion of how to cope with addictions. Addictions are those things that oftentimes are thought to be under control, but they actually control us. So, for example, there are people who uh, can't go months without drinking. There are folks who can't go months without uh, using porn. Uh, There are many things that are addictions. Some Some people are addicted to exercise and the endorphins. And what we want to do today is to talk about some of the challenges and the physiology of addiction. And then this week, we are going to actually have, as one of our uh, midweek shows, uh, Roy Kane, who will be coming on talking about the uh, importance of dealing with addictions and how to successfully uh, navigate the the difficult waters of addiction. So we're going to start, I'm going to take a little time to sort of establish a physiologic basis for addiction. Many of us have gone to school and heard of Pavlov's dog, which is basically uh, that experiment which garnered a lot of attention, where a bell was rung every time dogs were fed, and the dogs associated the bell with food, so that even if you presented the bell without the food, the dogs would salivate in anticipation of wanting to eat. And many of our uh, physiologic behaviors are influenced by hormonal processes and chemical processes. And one of the challenges with addiction is that Many times, the addiction itself feeds a cycle which ultimately causes less and less gratification over time. So when you think about uh, utilizing cocaine or utilizing sugar, and notice I use those two things together, when you think about adding those things to your life, they cause a very powerful neurological experience a sense of well-being, a sense of euphoria, a sense of calm, a sense of excitement, a sense of energy. But it's short-lived, and then subsequently you have to indulge that again to be at the same level. But what ends up happening in addiction is that it requires more and more and more of the stimulant to maintain the level of just normalcy not just the high in euphoria, but the normalcy. Uh, And then after a while, even the normal-type behavior, the normal-type feelings, become much more difficult because the brain no longer produces certain types of neurotransmitters. This challenge is related also to habits which are formed. Habits are similar to, or can be similar to addictions, because they are very powerful driving forces. When you have a habit of doing something, whether it be indulging in pornography or uh, indulging in uh, a cigarette, there are sometimes physical experiences that are happening, but also you're associating it with perhaps your social life or perhaps your lack of a social life. But it's usually associated with something, 
and that something becomes important in your life. The challenge when we're dealing with addictions is that many people don't realize that certain things are addictions. So, for example, there are many people who think alcoholism is merely uh, drinking a lot of alcohol. And that's not really the case. The amount of alcohol you drink isn't really important. It's what happens to your life after the consumption of alcohol that is infinitely much more important to determining whether or not you're an alcoholic. The other thing is the ability to cope without whatever the uh, addictive thing is. There's a mix of clean addictions and not so clean addictions. But what we need to do and what we need to define is why these addictions exist. Why is it that we indulge in these things? Why is it that we learn these behaviors and continue to perpetuate them even if at some point they harm us? We'll answer that question when we come back. You're listening to the Conversations from the Cave Show with host Kirk Kennedy and the CFTC crew. You can search for the CFTC podcast on Alexa and Siri. CFTC is also available for download on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, TuneIn, Tumblr, Podcast Republic, and Google Play Music. Want your church or men's group to host the next CFTC Live Man Up conference? Contact the crew on ProboxMediaGroup.com forward slash man up. Now, back to the man cave with Kirk Kennedy and the CFTC crew. We're talking about addictions today on Conversations from the Cave. We mentioned in the last segment how there is a physiologic response. There are chemicals in the brain that are stimulated by these habits that we form. And after a while, these pathways in our brain become stronger and stronger and stronger, and they become almost reflexes. If you're practicing doing something positive, for example, if you're practicing hitting a baseball, if you practice every day and you're utilizing a uh, good technique, and after a while, you'll be able to hit a baseball fairly easily without thinking about it. If you drive a stick shift car, and the first day you try to drive it, you're not going to be as good. But as you develop the skill set, and over time, it becomes a, an ingrained activity. The point I'm making is that things that we do often become much easier for us to do. They become part of our lives. The key, gentlemen, is to choose those things wisely that we choose to do repetitively. So if you repetitively watch porn, then that becomes a habit. If you repetitively, um, for example, masturbate, or if you perpetually go out and pay prostitutes, or if you perpetually drink to excess, these things become habits and after a while, those habits are formed and they become almost knee-jerk. So the question is, how can you make wiser choices? Or if you've already gone down the pathway in this direction, what can you do about it? Can you just say, yep, I'm going to let it go and today I'm going to white-knuckle it and I'm going to be free of this addiction? Well, there are a lot of people who make that choice. And there are some who are successful. I won't discount that there are many people with great resolve who can simply decide one day that they don't want to do something and then make a change and never return to that particular issue again. These people are few. You might be one of these people, but the overwhelming evidence suggests that in order to make a change, there has to be support for that change. So many decisions are necessary to make a change. So, for example, if you happen to have friends who are drinking buddies and you happen to indulge in drinking every time you're with those buddies, you'll have to make a tough choice as to whether or not keeping those buddies who are engaging in the activity you're trying to get away from is really very helpful to you. That's a difficult choice. Or if you are normally accustomed at 10.30 every morning to lighting up a cigarette with the crew of the ladies right outside the, uh, you know, outside your building and you guys take your 
walks at that time and all your friends are associated around cigarettes, then again, you have some tough decisions to make because that's part of your day, that's been part of your life, that's part of your social life. So these challenges are not simple ones. We have to make choices, and those choices are the things that will determine the steps we take to follow through with making those changes. So what happens when you decide to make a choice that says, hey, I'm not going to do that. And then the next thing you know, uh, for those who, who have a habit, you're indulging the habit again. What happens at that point? Well, usually, if you're not in support, you'll indulge in the activity and then subsequently be guilty or be upset about it because you're trying to make a change and frustrated and probably that will induce the desire to medicate that guilt and hurt, which then reinforces the habit that you're trying to avoid. So to break that habit, having an accountability partner to talk with you is an extremely effective way to begin the process of actually making a change. So if you have decided, okay, today I'm not going to smoke that cigarette, Today I'm not going to smoke that joint. Today I'm not going to drink that bottle. If today is the day that you make that decision, find someone that you can confide in and tell them that you are wanting to make this change. It does two things. One, it lets you hear yourself making the decision, and it also gives someone else the opportunity to call you on the carpet when you are making decisions that counteract your choice. So, gentlemen, the first step is making the decision. The second step is finding people who will hold you accountable for those things that you claim to want to do. It may not be easy to go along this journey to making change and to do things in a much more upright and effective manner, but you've got to make the steps. We've got to make those steps. And I think what's challenging is that when we deal with various habits, hang-ups, and hurts, it's hard to know why the habit got started in the first place. And we are going to cover that when we come back. The Conversations from the Cave Show is brought to you by the Alabama Cornea Care Center, Northern Alabama's first irregular cornea and sclera lens referral center. Dedicated to the management of complex irregular cornea cases, they provide hope and compassionate care for patients suffering from keratoconus, refractive surgery complications, and degenerative eye diseases. Call 256-937-1213 or visit alabamacorneacare.com for more details. Now, back to the Man Cave with Kirk Kennedy and the CFTC crew. We've talked thus far about the challenges, the physiological effects of having habits and addictions and how they get started, but we didn't really talk about why people use these things to cope. So oftentimes when there is a hurt, something deep down that hurts you and you choose to, instead of dealing with the hurt directly, suppress it and press it down and it might be something so terrible that you don't want anyone else to know. Almost every one of us has a hurt of some sort, something that we're not happy with, something that we're not uh, truly proud of, maybe a not so shining moment. Or maybe something happened to you in your life. Well, gentlemen, all of us in life have something that we are not in control of. Something that a circumstance that happened or a, an event that happened or an embarrassing moment that happens. All of us have something. There are no completely healthy people in all ways, shapes, and forms. What we usually find is that people who are considered healthy are those that don't don't tend to run from their problems. They tend to address them straight on and say, yeah, this is a challenge for me, or this was a challenge for me. And those are the healthiest people. It's generally the folks who simply say, I've got it under control, and I'm doing everything 
myself and I'm successful, that those individuals typically are either not telling the truth or they're falling and having rebounds and relapses and challenges that really are outside of their control and they're living in denial. So I believe it's important to get a support system and it's important to take responsibility in and of yourself to seek out a support system that will help you make strides and steps towards a positive change. There are many, many types of support groups. There are sexual addiction support groups. There are alcohol and um, uh, nicotine, uh, excuse me, narcotic uh, anonymous groups and a variety of other types of groups that are there to allow free and open discussion where steps can be taken for you to examine those areas of hurt and to begin the process of understanding where these things started, where these habits or these hurts or these hang-ups started, so that you're able to unearth them and be able to work effectively with others to be healthy. The also, also, one of the uh, truly exciting things is to think about the process of being able to help someone else who's gone through a challenge or who is being challenged by something that you have found the way out of doesn't mean that you won't have struggles with it, but it does mean that you are able to provide some guidance. There are many, many challenges that men face in particular. However, when men face challenges, oftentimes they don't face those challenges where they're able to communicate them to a group. That's almost one of the most unnatural things for guys to do. They deal with problems a lot of times on their own and sometimes not successfully. So speaking to guys, I want to encourage you to seek out good counsel. Seek out people who are making wise choices and who you admire so that you can begin to make the the types of decisions or to mimic some of the decisions that those individuals have made so that your path will be one that is uh, uh, redirected positively. I'm going to come back and talk about some specifics right after this break. The Conversations from the Cave Show is sponsored by Optique Huntsville, signature looks for men with discriminating taste. Design your signature look with stylists from Optique Huntsville. For more information, call 256-886-7281. Now, back to the Man Cave with Kirk Kennedy and the CFTC crew. Thanks for sticking around. I want to talk specifically about uh, two challenging addictions and specifically things that I think might be very, very helpful. So years ago, I had the opportunity of uh, working with an organization that dealt with alcohol and narcotics addiction. And I had the opportunity to uh, sit in on many groups and watch um, social workers and psychiatrists and psychologists work through the challenges that are associated with chemical addiction. There have also been new medications that have um, been developed to help with changing the response to uh, certain kinds of uh, chemical addictions. So, for example, in the case of alcohol, there are some who, the moment they imbibe alcohol, they begin to do things that they later regret. They will drink to blackout, and the result will be that their behavior is less than admirable. Those individuals who are dealing with alcoholism are more likely to engage in self-destructive behavior primarily because uh, there are moments where the need for alcohol becomes great, not just the uh, not just the hurt that they're medicating, but the need for the actual chemical. And thankfully, there are new medications which are actually helping with decreasing the desire for alcohol, the imbibement of alcohol. And I think it's important to mention that these opportunities are available and to start seeking them out. 
most programs will also have support groups which will have you talk about your problems so that you can face them square on and then the result is that you have a sense of what is your trigger. And I think it's important to know that every habit, every hang-up has a trigger. If yours is anxiety, if it's embarrassment, if it's stress at work, if it's uh, lack of uh, positive outcomes in decisions that you make, whatever it is that is a trigger, those things are helped when you are involved in group discussions. I, I just strongly encourage this, even if you do take a medical route to becoming clean from a chemical addiction. The other thing that I, I really want to stress is the importance of having something greater than yourself that you turn to. Any challenge, any addiction, any thing that is outside of our control, sometimes we have to submit that to something greater than ourselves to control it. And I believe that that is a higher power, and in my case, I believe that to be God. God is important in my decisions to making change in life. Now, if you are, we know that this broadcast goes all over the world, and there are many people who don't believe in God. And this isn't some sappy, uh, religious, you've got to do Jesus kind of thing. That's This is not what this is. But what I do believe is every man who recognizes that there is a moment that what's within you won't solve your problems. Something outside of you may have to solve your problems. I think that moment is the moment when real healing can take place. And I think there is a, a moment where we have to have a gut check and say, you know, I think internally I've gone as far as I can go. I will have to submit this to something greater. And then allow that greater power to become a transformative power in your life. I do want to cover one more thing that I think each person who has dealt with addiction needs to understand. Addictions don't happen overnight, and they don't leave necessarily overnight. So if you have had a challenge uh, with whatever, whether it be a clean addiction where nobody knows about it or an addiction where everybody can see it, a food addiction, um, or you know some kind of drug addiction like meth where everybody knows you've got it, or alcoholism and everybody knows you're an, a drunk or you're hearing people tell you you're a drunk. These addictions all of them, there is one thing, single thing that needs to run through the mind of the addicted. And that is, the moment you start to want to change is the day that you begin to have change in your life. The moment that you decide enough is enough is the day that you will begin to do the hard work to make change. I believe that many men, in particular, suffer and struggle alone with challenges that continue to consume them. And I want to specifically talk to you and to tell you that there is hope. There is hope that anyone can change. Anyone can be transformed. Anyone can be renewed. It may seem hopeless. You may seem to be powerless over the addictions you have. If you've gotten to that place, you're already starting to figure out that you need help. So for those guys who are still trying to solve it on your own, good luck to you. Continued success if you've got it all figured out. But to those guys who have finally come to a place in their life where they're looking at their, their image in the mirror and they don't like what they see, or if they're the guy, if you're the guy who's decided man, this is, this is just not the way I want to be anymore. To you, I want to encourage you to reach out to either a, a support group, uh, some organization associated with a church that's a support group, or one of the more common um, support groups like Alcoholics Anonymous or Narconon or whatever it is that you have as your addiction. Reach out to a support group and get involved. Finally, I would like to say, engage in prayer. 
for those of you who are struggling with things that are outside your control, some things you simply have to turn over to prayer and do the work. So prayer without work isn't going to get you that far, but prayer with work will get you. And I I really want to encourage you that every time you deal with your addiction, every time you deal with that struggle, every time you struggle with whatever that thing is that makes life difficult for you, that you fall on your knees and surrender it. Give it to the Lord or give it to your higher power and ask them to guide you through it. I believe in the power of prayer. I believe in the power of making change. And I believe in being resolved that things can happen good in the life of individuals who are choosing to make changes. We'll be right back after these messages. The Conversations from the Cave Show is produced by the Provox Media Group. The Provox Media Group provides custom digital media and production services to ethical businesses around the world. For more information, call 256-361-9127 or visit ProvoxMediaGroup.com. Now, back to the Man Cave with Kirk Kennedy and the CFTC crew. Thanks so much for hanging around. This week, we're going to have Roy Kane, who is the Celebrate Recovery uh, Alabama State Rep. And one of the reasons why we want to do this, uh, gentlemen, is we want to give you an opportunity to know that everyone struggles, but you don't have to remain uh, downtrodden by whatever you're struggling with. So we are choosing to take uh, a s- several sessions on Conversations from the Cave, and I thought it important to establish this uh, series with a basis so that all of our future discussions um, will have some sort of uh, perspective. Gentlemen, I am hopeful that if any of you are dealing with challenges, sexual addictions, uh, chemical addictions, clean addictions, whatever those addictions are, that you will tune in and that you'll begin to feel the opportunity uh, or the desire to change. We know that hurting men hurt people. And if you can become healed, if you can become a man who is authentic and healthy, that you can do a lot of good in your society. So we are encouraging you to tune in over the next few weeks as we bring you these different uh, programs, because I think what it does is it speaks to the things that I think we all want. We all want to be men who are respectable, or at least those who are listening to this show do. We all want to be men who rise above our circumstances and become significant in some way, shape, or form. And I think it's important to give tools to allow men to reach those goals. So I appreciate you men who have stuck around and decided to hang with us here on Conversations from the Cave. We will be back uh, on later this week, probably on Wednesday or Thursday of this week. So we'll have a special broadcast of our podcast where we're going to actually start dealing directly with the issues associated with addiction. So thanks again for tuning in. And once again, starting with yourself, let's love one another. I'm Kirk Kennedy. See you next time. Conversations from the Cave is brought to you by the Alabama Cornea Care Center, a copywritten production of the Provox Media Group, creators of positive, inspirational media for businesses and nonprofit organizations around the world. For more information, visit the Provox Media Group at ProvoxMediaGroup.com or call 256-886-0405. The views expressed on this program are the personal beliefs of the panelists and do not necessarily represent the beliefs of the Provox Media Group or its sponsors.